Oh, 0700? How about OK? You scamp, I love you. Thanks to your dad, I don't need my vitamins anymore. Would you believe me if I told you this is how I found out who Craig Ferguson was? I was sheltered, guys. God. But I did meet Jay Leno once at Borgata when I was like 12, and he was really nice. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about American Dad. Or, more specifically, Barry. It's Barry. I'm Barry! Yes, Barry, I just said you were Barry. Like I've made clear before, American Dad is best known for their various twists and turns, as that makes the episodes interesting and quite memorable. Like Stan secretly being anorexic, not having his food sabotaged out of spite, or Mr. Javits being a warlock. I mean, why would Roger spend the entire episode calling him the Bone Man if he were not a warlock? You never called him that! Let's not play who said Bone Man when. Yes, Steve, God. But one of the most popular twists has to be the twist with Barry, Steve's closest friend next to Snot. Sorry, Toshi. No offense, it's just that your family has more potential than you do sometimes. So let's discuss. In the world of American Dad, Steve has a core group of three nerdy friends who, like him, are all outcast losers in some way, shape, or form. Barry's main trait is to be an overweight idiot who doesn't understand social conventions, like the fact he was abused or he was in movies with his uncle or stuff like that. Which, yeah, maybe Roger had a point about Steve being king of the nerds compared to a perv like Snot or an idiot like Barry or Toshi who just distances himself from most people, Steve almost seems normal. And this dynamic is explored in the episode with friends like Steve's. Stan is taking Steve on a tour of the CIA, which does not wow Steve, as Steve has seen the place hundreds of times. You excited? For my 8 billionth installment of Look How Awesome My Dad Is, how could I not be? You couldn't! I was just making conversation. Steven, look, I understand the hatred, but do you know how hard it is to get into the CIA, even just the museum? Trust me, I've tried. Legally, of course. They don't offer tours to the general public. Look, I'm a skeleton! You're my mother? Oh, my niece saw through that joke, so I can no longer use it. Uh, at least we still have the Cheeto Monster, and Bruno from Encanto, and the Snake Lady. Hey Donnie, tell my son about the guy who tried to sneak a lipstick camera past the XR-21. I accidentally shot him. Yeah, you did! It's called Justice, and it was hilarious! I didn't know what those were till like, right now. And I call myself a video production kid. All of this hammers into the audience that while Stan loves his son, Steve is embarrassed by him. Good thing Steve would later emancipate himself from this bullying loser. Wait, he did? You better not say a word or I'm gonna kill you, Gavrin. Look who's here! Steve, want me to teach you some dolphin chatter? You've already taught me how to speak dolphin. All they ever want to talk about is mackerel. Nonsense! The dolphins are great! Keep this in mind going forward, but I heard dolphins are actually major a-holes. And they have prehensile... things in order to make mating easier. <sighs> See what I mean? Stan is upset that he can't bond with Steve, and to be honest, I kind of feel bad for him here. But now it's like he's not into me anymore. I'm serious, Roger. I'm opening up to you here. It's like my son's rejection is bringing up all kinds of feelings I don't understand. Oh. Okay. Normally, when Stan tries to bond with his son, he forces Steve to partake in some kind of activity to make him man up. And not fun Book of Mormon style man up. And while it's something Stan enjoys, Steve hates it. Here, while Stan still doesn't fully understand Steve, he is trying to compromise, showing Steve stuff from the CIA that he figured Steve might enjoy. And in a way, he's kind of right. Think about it. Sci-fi dolphins? Maybe at one point Steve enjoyed it, but now that he's older, 
and he also has an alien in the attic. Quite the hipster. It makes no difference to him. But we all know that Steve at one point was obsessed with being a Republican, if only to make his father happy. Like when he protested against the log cabin Republicans or eliminated all naughty television in Langley Falls simply because Stan unintentionally discovered the secret of touching yourself. Maybe Stan is trying to recreate that bond or he doesn't realize Steve just outgrew that mindset. And that's perfectly natural. And in a way, this makes it all the more tragic. Of course, Roger doesn't want to hear any of it, so he goes off with Haley to have a fraternity-themed B-plot. But the Eskimos, their plight, that's the real stuff here. You care about the Eskimos? Yeah, yeah, I love their pies. Keep going, walk, 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 walk. You know, I almost joined a sorority, but you gotta pay a bunch of money, and it's like clicky. It I just did not have the time. Kitty, I don't think this has anything to do with Barry. Look, Catherine, I thought about not including it, but Barry references it later. But Meanwhile, Haley became upset when she discovered the funds from her Eskimo studies program were going to a fraternity. Wait, what? I don't think we were even aware of those events. Silence! So, I think I might have to. Plus, it includes a twist of its own, a mini twist at that. And hey, this video is about a twist. I'll just get it out of the way now. See, as Roger doesn't want to be bothered with Stan, she goes with Haley to Croft Community College to help her jumpstart her Eskimo Studies program. But she finds that the Dean gave all the money to the fraternities. Which, in most fiction terms, means a bunch of jocks who get paid a full scholarship to essentially party non-stop. Not jocks who sometimes party, but do charity and grades and stuff like that. Lazy, immature guys getting drunk on every kind of liquor known to man. Hi, can you please help me? I'm not drunk. What? It's not my fault NJIT enforced maximum occupancy limits whenever they threw Halloween parties. Roger joins in, and much like her father, Haley proves to be a major hypocrite. So, she has fun too. The coup stayed over. Leave me alone, Roger. Ashamed I turned my back on the Eskimos. You sure turned your back on me last night, ha. <laughs> Ooh, eh, at least you studied an Eskimo in the most unorthodox of ways. They have fun, at least until Roger learns that, as a pledge, he's responsible for the cleanup. After a house party, pledges spend the day cleaning up. Why don't you start by cleaning that up? <laughs> Tired of getting spanked by dudes anyway. Arguably, it's not that memorable compared to the A-plot. All it really does is kill time and get the two most saying his characters out of the stories, so Steve has a harder time of it. So it's just easier for me to do something I rarely do and compress it into a little tiny section. On the bright side, at least it adds a teeny tiny bit of brevity to the situation. Okay, back to the actual video. My compromise is over. Stan wants to go to the Franklin Mint with Steve. Whatever that is, do they make coins or something? And he wants to get some new plates. Steve, do you still want to go to the Franklin Mint this weekend? The new Clara Peller commemorative plates are in. Where's the beef? <laughs> Good question. Where was that beef? Of course, Steve says no and goes to answer the door. I wonder who it could be. Hey, Steve. Somebody left this on your front porch. That's a doormat, Barry. Who's Matt Barry? I think he voiced Merkimer in Disenchantment, in Bubbles and Sponge Out of Water, and Alan in Aquatine. Oh crud, I can't believe I only know him from his bit parts. Fun fact, if Venture Brothers got a final season, they were gonna have him voice Force Majeure. Great, it's the fat one. Okay, I should explain. Basically, this isn't something that only happened during this one episode. Stan hates Barry. And all about Steve, he spent the entire episode threatening him. He hopes to create a Middle Earth in the here and now. That's it. I've cracked it. But wait a second. Steve was the one who... If I had to guess, it's because Barry is fat. And as we all know, Stan hates fat people. Oh my gosh, would he hate me? But remember the whole Debbie fiasco? He's actually being pretty generous here. Still, Francine does not give a single damn and allows Barry to stay for dinner. Mom, can Barry stay for dinner? If it's okay with his parents. Oh, they won't care. They never care. Good people. My kind of people. We'll get to this. Before dinner, Barry has to take a vitamin. May I have a glass of water? Fatty can use the garden hose! 
Perry, why haven't you mastered the art of swallowing the vitamin whole like a Tic Tac? I do that when my sergeline, it's so much fun. At dinner, we see that Stan is having trouble bonding with Steve once again. They have little in common, and Steve now knows that despite his awesome sauce stories, Stan has never killed anybody, even though prior to that episode, he canonically has. Yeah, I really hate that episode. But there is somebody interested in his stories. You're in Grenada! Barry, don't encourage- Why don't you pull up a couple of chairs? Two things. First, I like how they put Barry at a kitty table by himself. Weirdly, I always prefer that because I hate people watching me eat, and I would at least get a TV out of it. And second- Yes, he was born a Grenada, Barry. With Anthony, Peter, Coleman, and Tony. Nobody was laughing out loud that day in Grenada, but many people were saying, OMG, him? He was saying, TTYL, to his innocence. While Steve is a little disappointed that Stan is favoring Barry over him, he is at least happy that Barry took the load off of him. And he doesn't have to participate in any more boring bonding stuff with his father. Long after dinner, Stan and Barry are having loads of fun. You hear that, Steve? Your dad knows my name. My name is Barry, and he knows that! Yes, and I know your name too, Barry. It's Barry. However, then Stan starts to go a little too far. So, Barry, wanna wind down by watching the best movie ever, Red Dawn? Dad, I thought that was our thing. Oh, you're off the hook, Steve. I know you never bought into the whole Nicaraguans, Russians, and Cubans invading Colorado thing. I mean, if you guys don't want to do that, you could probably watch the episode Great Dawn from South Park. It feels a little more believable. Or that horrible remake that Josh Peck did a few years back. I heard that's all right. As a result, Steve begins to feel a little left out. You don't need me? Per se, Steve. Jeez, does anyone appreciate Latin anymore? Well done, Barry. Per se. Pauser. After their day at the Mint, Stan shows Barry his playroom, which used to be Francine's workspace when she was a comedian. But their little interaction has to be interrupted as Barry needs to take his vitamins. Time for my vitamin! I should run home and get more. You don't need those. Your little candy pills won't make you live forever, will they? Stan, you weren't supposed to do that. I know I made that antidepressant joke before, but now that I'm on them, and they've helped me get my PMDD and my depression under control, this scene does irritate me a little more than it did when I was 12. You don't tell people that, especially kids. To be fair, Stan thought they were vitamins, which usually you can live without. But Stan never inquires to be or to Barry's parents why he's taking said vitamins, or what the vitamins are even for. For all he knows, maybe they're not like Flintstone vitamins. Maybe Barry is anemic or something. You know what? Maybe to a small degree, Stan really does deserve what's coming to him. Dad, you said if I ever set foot in the commemorative plate room, you'd send me to military school. And you also said that this room has a maximum capacity of two. Ooh, I never noticed this before. This is a nice touch. The first time Barry says something dark, albeit in a stupid kind of way so the viewer and Steve won't think twice. Later that night, Stan has allowed Barry to sleep over. And as Barry doesn't have any PJs, he forces Steve to share. Hey, Steve. My Spider-Man shirt! Told you he wouldn't mind. I'm not gonna make a joke or anything, but what I will say is I wish I had Barry's confidence to rock a belly shirt. I would love to cosplay as Velvet or Arkham City Harley Quinn. When his father is out of earshot, Steve tells Barry to put an egg in his shoe and beat it like Brenda Quagmire. What? Too soon? Go home? Yes, go home. Just cut off my shirt and leave. I don't think so, Steve. I like it here. Wait, what? You see, your father and I get along quite well. He likes me and I like him. And no one is going to stand in the way of our friendship. Aw, oh, crud. Okay, well, it seems like Barry is an evil diesel weasel. And he's also somehow British. Unless maybe it's like how Garnet is somehow British, even though Ruby and Sapphire are American. And he has an unhealthy attraction to Stan. Like a bunny boiler mixed with one of those robots from Westworld. Which I think makes sense, as his parents are highly neglectful. I wouldn't be surprised if... In some weird way, Stan was the first adult who actually took interest in Barry, when all the others just see a stupid fat idiot. 
Plus, I feel like it makes sense for Barry to be this against Steve. While we do know that Steve values Barry and their friendship, he also has a tendency to treat Barry like crap. And in a way, he has literally everything Barry could want. Loving parents, good grades, a roof over his head, stuff like that. So maybe Barry, deep down, does have some resentment or jealousy towards Steve that only really comes out when he's evil. Get in the bottom bunk, Steven, and go to sleep! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that should be with you momentarily. My name is Barry. Oh wow, even when he's evil, he's Barry. Steve tries to tell the family that every berry is lemons, but they don't listen because evil is not how you spell evil. And, and he ate it! He, he ate the fly! He, he, he just ate it! Well, you tell Barry not to fill up on junk. I'm making tacos for dinner. And while Barry manipulated Stan by appealing to him, he does something similar with Francine. Boy, that bathroom is so clean, Mrs. S. How do you find the time to still be so pretty? No, oh, Barry, please. I look terrible. Well, I'm heading to church for Bible study. Mind if I catch a ride? Speaking of, I think we can add religion to the list of things Stan and Steve no longer have in common. While Stan is a fanatical Christian, Steve, well, one episode had him doubt the Bible, so I guess he's an atheist, or he could be, like, an agnostic or a non-practicing Christian. Stan, can we stop by church on the way to breakfast? Before I take my first sip of OJ, I like to take a big gulp of Jesus. Oh god, guys, maybe you should go now, no offense. Like, you might make it to church by the skin of your teeth and be forced to sit in the back row, but I hear the Sunday church crowds are the worst. They are, ironically, hell. Yes, I mind. You have to believe me, there's something wrong with Barry. Something evil. Fine, I'll open the door. When we get to church, nobody pray for Steve. That's my favorite line in the whole episode. You have no idea how long I've been dying to use it. Put it right up there with the choo-choo poo-poos, guys. Steve tries to tell Barry once again what his deal is, and Barry starts crying. Oh, whoa, Barry, I, I didn't mean to- No, no, you're right. It it's just that your dad is so great, and I wanted to have a dad like that, and I feel bad. Well, Barry is obviously just trying to frame Steve here. Part of me feels like he's telling the truth, perhaps to a small degree. Don't worry, we'll get to it later. As it turns out, Barry frames Steve, who could have funk, by making everybody think he broke Stan's commemorative plates. Why, Steve, why? What? I didn't do it. Why, well, yours are the only fingerprints on there. Oh my god, the oven mitt! And I have a few things to say here. Well, first off, why does American Dad like making fun of Tara Reid? Like, did she do something? Hey, that's my dad's Tara Reed collector's plate. You can't touch that. You know how much that'll be worth in a few months when she's dead? And second, you all know I hate these types of storylines, but here, I do sort of understand it. Stan was worried all episode that he could not connect with Steve, when the real problem was he was just being too pushy. So compared to most other examples, I'm more understanding here. Still, I do dislike how quickly they took Barry's side, or how Francine couldn't abdicate for her son or something like that. Like, oh, Steve couldn't have done that. Give him another chance, Stan. I think he's dead. Dangerous. He told me he's been strangling cats for years. <sighs> well, at least he wasn't eating the cats, but he at least juggled them, which we know is objectively cool, and he is nobody's fool. Barry suggests that they should send Steve off for re-education. Oh my god, what's happened to our son? I think it's time for a little tough love. Ah, ah, ah. Oven me! Which, no offense, Barry, but he's gonna come back eventually. What are you gonna do to him then? Steve ends up doing hard labor at an oil rig. Ooh, I wonder if Luann's daddy is there. Um, where are we? Well, we ain't at a dentist in Tucson trying to convince the waitress it's our birthday. And escape is futile. Try to escape and you'll be met with deadly sharks and sniper fire. Do as you're told, and you'll find this a very safe environment. Wow, well, talk about overkill. With Steve gone, Stan and Barry have been spending plenty of time together. Thank you. Oh, 
Steve isn't interested in playing Red Dawn with me anymore. You know, I was about to inquire if that's what this reference was, but now that it's made, ugh, damn it, I guess I need to make another. Uh, can somebody please make some fan art of Evil Barry and Stan singing that beautiful sound from Beetlejuice? That would be great. I'm still waiting for somebody to draw Emperor Bellows and Lilypad as wonderful from Wicked. Anyhow, the fun has to be put on hold for like five minutes as Stan must attend to Francine, cause you know, he has a wife. I need some furniture moved while I vacuum. Sorry champ, playtime's over. But wife comes first, pal. Francine, no offense, but why the hell can you not do it yourself? Don't you enjoy power lifting the couch? How are you supposed to tone your Franny Fanny? This causes Evil Barry to pursue a new target. Uh, Francine is first on my list to kill. Oh, I wonder what he's gonna do. No, really, I, I actually do wonder what he's gonna do. Where's Francine? Uh, someplace she can't get between us anymore. Uh, Mo, over, Stan, you're freezing. I can't believe Barry buried, that was weird to say, Francine alive. I think Roger did it once too. You know, I'm surprised Francine hasn't figured out yet how to free herself from coffins a la Beatrix Kiddo. If there is a method that is Mythbusters approved, please tell me because getting buried alive is one of my biggest fears, next to escalators, insect close-ups, and having to call for Chinese food. Hit the oil rig while the I guess Sergeant is singing about Oliver. If any of you were thinking about breaking into a musical number, think again! I'm the only one who sings on this rig! Steve starts to notice something is off with his fellow, I guess, prisoners, you could call them. Kinda reminds me of Holes. Thank you. Not only can they not build, they all seem to be really can't say that word anymore. Oh well. I guess we'll have to skip this topic, as it seems to be lunchtime. What's on the menu? Line up, munchwads! Time for your pills! What pills? The ones that <laughs> your aggressive criminal minds! Dude, did you not hear what the heck I just said? You really can't say that word anymore! Wait a minute. Feed the fish. Steve, what the yeah. f did I just say? You know what? Next scene. So as it turns out, Barry is naturally pure evil, and his parents put him on pills that make him too stupid to unlock his darker impulses. Time to take my vitamin. That's it. Barry stopped taking his meds. He's on yeah. Which is why you don't deprive people of their medicine, dumbass. Vitamins or not. I'm allowed to say the D word, right? Well, the Excel sheet you keep bookmarks says it's alright, so yeah. Thank you, Nerd City. Speaking of, this reveal kind of makes me wonder if Barry was sent to that camp. Hence him knowing the ins and outs. OMG, imagine he gets sent to the camp from Holes. Or did he think that Steve would be medicated like he was, and when he came back, he wouldn't have to worry about him? Steve is able to free himself from the facility thanks to something his father taught him. Dolphins! And also identity theft. We haven't even played identity theft yet! Look at me! I don't think I showed that clip. That was amazing, Steve! How'd you learn to do all that? Um, my dad taught me. Cool! Very cool. Yeah, I guess it is. Aw, kinda. Steve hurries home and he better do it fast because not only has Evil buried, buried, oh god I said it again, his mother alive, but he has revealed himself to Stan. Uh, but since you're up, what do you say we go downstairs for a little game? Your, your voice. Soothing, isn't it? You freaking idiot, you lost your only leverage. He forces Stan to spend time with him playing all kinds of ridiculous games until Steve arrives home. Play the card! <laughs> all right, Barry, the jig is up. Steve, you're a jockey. Had to do a lot of things you taught me to get home. Before Barry can shoot him to Kingdom Come, Steve proposes one final game. Oh, it's always like the bell dam. Your antipsychotic vitamin is in one of these glasses. You choose which one, then we both drink. Delightful. Careful, Steve. He's as mad as he is fat. Wait, why is Stan tied up? Wait, no, it can't be. 
Inconceivable. Kitty, I don't think you know what that word means. Stop making callbacks to the first time you appeared, Catherine. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a happy ending. Oh god, and now you're Marfa dump trucking. I know you've seen the Princess Bride. You're stalling! And I knew you were going to say that. And I am officially out of Princess Bride references. Good movie, though. Continue on, episode. Are you gonna choose a glass? Yes, I choose this one! Oh no, the episode is almost over. I wonder what happened. Thanks for driving me home, Mr. Smith. We're going faster than people. Quiet, fatty, fat, fat, fatty! Oh, okay, that's good. I guess he won. How'd you know he'd pick the right glass? I put vitamins in both. Oh, or you could do that. I mean, the pills are gonna wear off. But while memorable, this is not the last time we see Evil Barry. To my knowledge, there is one more episode featuring him, presenting Stan and Francine and Connie and Ted. Barry's parents have invited Steve to go on a vacation with them. Barry invited me to go with his family on a trip next month to see the world's largest chest of drawers and I'd very much like to go. Aw, oh, that sounds fun. Now, up to this point, we haven't met Barry's parents. I mean, we've met the parents of Toshi and Snot, except Snot's father, because he's frickin' dead. But point is, we have met those parents, and while they can be a little cuckoo banana cream pie, they have been able to take care of Steve, or been grateful that their son had a friend, and put their craziness aside, if only for a few minutes. We never got that same assurance from Barry's parents, and consider Considering evil Barry, it's very likely they're worse than him, or maybe better, as they realized their son had violent tendencies and they tried to do something about it. However, a vacation is obviously a lot different than a quick study session or a sleepover, even if they presumably did allow Steve to go cross country during independent movie. Of course, Francine and Stan refused their request, and this makes Steve real mad. Go bananas. <laughs> Wow, Steve is going real peanut butter, banana, and jelly time. Peanut butter, banana, and jelly time. Too bad nobody cares. Sounds like Steve's going bananas again. Yep. Steve, do you tend to go bananas quite often? In order to get his parents to agree, he decides to introduce them to Barry's parents over dinner. At Barry's house, of course. Oh yeah, I don't think we've ever been there. Goon Barry and his cave troll parents. Hey, I don't want to do this either. You think chowing down on swamp stew with a couple of real-life ogres is at the top of my bucket list? Still, I find it really weird that... They've never met Barry's parents. I mean, I can get us not meeting Barry's parents, but them? Barry has been friends with Steve since he was in elementary school, if not way earlier. Are they that neglectful? Like, report card nights, sleepovers, parties, potlucks. Finally, we are introduced to them and... Stan, Francine, what a sight. Wow, they are hot. Like, they look like gods, holy crud. And they made Barry? Well, does his medication turn him into all this? I mean, it is a side effect of certain medications. Frickin' antidepressants. Of course, they make me gain weight, but I can't eat anything, and my alcohol tolerance is down to here. So much mahogany. Thick wood. A man's wood. Mahalo, Mahalo. Mahalo? Barry, you never told me you were a native Hawaiian. Francine and Stan are enthralled by Barry's parents, Connie and Ted, if you couldn't guess by the episode's title. And get this, Barry's last name is Robinson, meaning Connie is Mrs. Robinson. Mom, you know Mrs. Robinson here makes a mean Harvey Wallbanger. Oh, it's just vodka with some orange juice and a scooch of Galliano. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. The couple's dance drink the whole nine yards. Are two smoking hot tens like you give birth to this? And this is nothing against Barry here. I adore Barry. I mean this in the kindest way possible. Stomach-turning hobgoblin. <laughs> All seems right in Steve's world until he discovers in another room. So you want to be a swinger? So you want to swing with your son's friend's parents? Barry's parents aren't going to rub off on mom and dad. They're going to rub one out on mom and dad. Oh no, they're swingers. And here I thought they would be Nazis or former concentration camp guards. 
You know, this kind of reminds me of that one episode of Bob's Burgers where Linda goes to visit her parents, only to discover that possibly next to the Chihuahua lady, they're like the only non-swingers in their community. Steve goes to Barry to confirm the allegations, and it turns out they're true. Treehouse time. Treehouse time. Treehouse time. I spend most nights in the treehouse while my mom and dad have wrestling parties. Time to put on our blindfolds and headphones. Now, okay, let's talk about neglect. For the longest time, I wasn't the biggest fan of this episode because it felt like a massive retcon. Because for as much as Ted and Connie are awesome sauce, Barry always made a big point that they were abusive. He was just too stupid to get the connotations. Mom, can Barry stay for dinner? If it's okay with his parents. Oh, they won't care. They never care. So seeing Connie and Ted felt kind of weird here. I was expecting a big reveal that this was like the visit, where maybe Barry's real parents took off or something like that, or they're hidden in the basement, or he killed them in a fit of rage, hence the pills, and the real ones are imposters or actors or something like that, or maybe cannibals. But no, those really are his parents. However, to be fair, I feel like despite being awesome sauce, Connie and Ted are still awful people and awful parents who ignore their only son. Rather than treat his evil side by figuring out why he's evil, they simply give him pills and call it a day. Or here, while I have no problem if parents swing, so long as it is between two or more consenting adults, they simply force Barry to go into the other room in complete sensory deprivation like a five-year-old so they can do it. And they advise Steve, their own guest, to do the same. Later, they take off on a trip without Barry. And when Barry shows up sounding different, they don't care. Cowboys and Indians, huh? The bellboy said you both need to pick up a bag in the steam room. Oh, okay. Thanks for the message, hon. I kind of wish the episode made this point more. When you look at it, Connie and Ted really suck. But it's a good thing that they're hot with perfect bodies, and they can eat whatever the heck they want without gaining a pound. Francine, bananas foster in the hot tub. Bananas Foster? With the bananas shaped like <laughs> and the ice cream shaped like boobs? That's what that is? I thought it was like a drink or something. Or like an ice cream sundae. Of course, Steve is upset that his parents might swing as he's projecting his hatred of his virginity onto his parents, who regularly plow like farmers, and who plowed so horribly that Francine's pent-up aggression literally became a poltergeist. Listen, my parents are prudes. If I don't get them out of here before yours come on to them, they might never let us hang out again. Seriously, why isn't my purity ball and chain referenced more? Did Steve lose his virginity in that episode, or didn't he? I need answers. Okay, again, Steve is afraid that his parents are going to swing. Oh no, are they gonna front hug next? I need to go to the hospital! Ugh, it's always the hospital with you, Steve. First when you were born, and now again? Inhaling makes it worse by insinuating that Connie and Ted are grooming them. What? They would never do that! Oh yeah? Sounds like Barry's parents are grooming them. It's only a matter of time before they claim their prey. <laughs> Mom and Dad won't know what hit him. I can't tell if Haley's trying to troll him, but I go with that. It seems like Haley's assertions are correct, as Stan and Francine start to take after Barry's parents. They dress like them and copy some of their mannerisms. Am I right? What? Connie and Ted are out of sight, man. Yeah, they actually suggested hanging out again sometime. Absolutely not! But despite this being kind of concerning, I gotta say, Stan is really rocking that outfit. Like, I never found Stan that attractive, but really, when he wants to flaunt it, he can. He's like the hottest out of all the Seth MacFarlane fathers, if only by default. Steve gets angry at his parents for wanting to do whatever they want with their own bodies, as things will be awkward between the parents. So he grounds them. If you so much as talk to them again, I'll take away your internet privileges. I pay for the internet. Yeah, but only I know how to set it up. Oh, if only Butters could do that to his parents. Give them a taste of their own medicine. That would be a good episode. Of course, Stan and Francine are grown adults. And Stan both works for the CIA and is the Justin Long walrus. So they end up escaping and putting orangutans in their place. But the news said there were three orangutans stolen from the zoo. I got it! Stop my parents! 
from making the biggest mistake of their lives! Oh my god, I wonder where they could have gone. Obviously to the mall. Actually, no. Steve goes to Barry's house to inquire if his parents are there. And he learns that they took off with his parents for a fun weekend at a swingers retreat. Wait, those are still a thing. I think that was a Beavis and Butthead episode. I think it was like the first one I watched from the 90s. Nudist resort? But nude is how you have sex! Doesn't have to be. And speaking of, OMG, imagine the STDs there. It must be like a Petri dish. Steve and Barry manage to sneak in, and Steve finds his parents in a barrel of pickles and clams and oysters and clams and cockles. <gasps> it's a thing, look it up, my god. Steve finally confesses that Barry's parents are swingers, and not the cool kind of swingers that sing jazz while high on performance-enhancing drugs, they are the totally uncool kind that bone with other couples. Does that mean you're swingers too now? We enjoy hanging out with Connie and Ted, but we made it clear that very first night that swinging wasn't our thing. We can maintain boundaries for ourselves. Yes, Steve, they could handle themselves and they're still good friends. I mean, remember that one time you thought that if Francine and Snot's mom weren't friends, you and Snot couldn't be friends, and then you both frickin' died? Oh my god, I still need a resolution. It feels like it was demanding a part two that never happened. Steve runs back to the room he and Barry are staying at to clear up the misunderstanding and to apologize for dressing dragging Barry all the way to their wienermobile, and not the fun one. Quite to the contrary. <gasps> People come here to swing, and swing are parents. Yeah. Yay, he's back! Yay! Finally, this section of the video doesn't feel like one huge exposition vomit. As it turns out, Evil Barry has appeared because Steve took Barry away from his house way too quickly and forgot about his medication. When you took me on this trip in such haste, you once again deprived me of my medication. And sealed your parents' marriage's doom! I mean, Stephen, how could you forget? It's like Barry said. As you may remember, a few months but what seems like years ago. Now that Barry is unmedicated, he has become evil once again, and he's decided that their parents must swing like a seesaw for some reason. Now, your worst fear will come true! <laughs> this is the same guy that bit my finger because I was holding a piece of cake. Which feels weird. Like, I can get him being super attached to Stan in his first appearance. Stan was showing an interest in Barry. They were bonding. And again, his father is highly neglectful. There at least was a reason for it. Here, I don't know why he's so hellbent on their parents swinging. Does he think Steve's being too overprotective and they should let loose? Does he think it'll help both parents to punish Steve for taking him away for the weekend? It's so weird. Like, I'm not opposed to fan service, I just wish there was a better excuse for it. This twist was better executed during With Friends Like Steve. To this end, Barry locked their parents in a sauna and pumped it full of aphrodisiacs. OMG, that could kill them. Remember Frank Grimes Jr.? They won't be able to resist doing it now. Don't you want to see your parents punished, young Stephen? for not letting you do what you wanted? Steve gets angry at what Barry intends to do. So, so angry. That's making me mad, Barry. Getting me real frustrated. Don't you do it, Steven. Don't you go bananas. Oh, it's happening! Don't you dare. Daylight coming, me one go home. Here I go! Steve breaks out and goes to save his parents, who did indeed bone themselves, as in their respective couples. But only with our respective partners. We hung up a towel as a barrier, although we did fist bump each other through it quite a bit. We told you we could maintain boundaries for ourselves. Oh, okay then. All is right with the world. Even if Evil Barry is still out there and unmedicated and likely pissed that Steve flailed all over him. But I guess Steve is happy and that's all that counts, right? Rats, I was expecting some action. Oh well, I guess we're gonna have to. Eddie, what about the Roger Goes Blind plot? 
Okay, look, I thought about including this too, but really it's boring outside of Roger donning the costume and the theater scene. Sucks so hard. Here, I'm gonna dictate a message to you. Shut the hell up! Shut up, you Get out of here, why don't you? Fine. I told you this was a stupid idea. If only because I've experienced a-holes like that in real life, so it felt a tad relatable for me. Especially when I went to go see FNAF after DerbyCon in full Venture Brothers cosplay, and there was this one mom and her kid who would not shut up the entire movie. Like, at one part where Mike is talking to Abby, she was like, you gotta stop talking, and I just rolled my eyes so hard. Anyhow, I do love Evil Barry, and I hope he comes back in a way that makes sense. Until then, we're just gonna have to make do with what we have, and if you guys are in the Orlando area, I will be at MegaCon all four days. Can't wait to see you there. Bye!